What's happening? Yesterday we had some new developments. I want to make you aware of what is taking place since yesterday. Valen shareholders vote in favor of the arrangement with s and or Sundial Incorporated. This was an overwhelming support in favor of this because obviously it benefited the company. I believe they're going to be a good fit also for Sundial Incorporated. They've got some innovations. I want to cover those in this video. We want to talk about some macroeconomic factors also, but over 96% of the votes casted in the company special meeting of shareholders held on November yesterday, held on November 29th, 2022, were in favor of the resolution. And there was a whole list of reasons that were covered to help people vote in favor of this previously. I mean, I've looked through the company. They look like a strong company. This will be a short-term dilution for shareholders. Of course, anytime Sundial Incorporated is acquiring someone else, it's going to be a short-term setback for the company, but long-term growth potential for those of you looking to hold on to this long-term. Be greedy with your money in this environment. And let's take a look at this major financial association and 44 state partners who are demanding this Safe Banking Act get passed. This is a Twitter notification that came out yesterday, Independent Community Bankers of America. We've got the document here. Feel free to check this out if you want to. That's where you can find it. But to give you the short version of what was in this, the biggest thing I took away was 71% of voters agree that allowing cannabis-related businesses to access the banking system would help reduce risk of robbery and assault at CRBs. Now, this is common sense, right, that we should be passing this. I believe if you're a legitimate business, and it looks like a lot of these bankers agree, if you're a legitimate business, you should have access to be able to be non-cash, and that's what it's all about. It's also about those equities being able to come public that are on the OTC exchange, but let's transition very quickly to find out what's happening with hiring and the macroeconomic factors that are coming out. Some breaking news. About an hour ago, private hiring increased by just 127,000 jobs in November. And just to let you know how low that number is, the estimate was 190. And in October, it was 239. We are really starting to see some pressure come on jobs as the Fed expected. Now, these interest rate hikes, these last few cycles have come and they've come hard and fast. So we've got stock futures that are rising before the market opens. And of course, by the time I get this video out, the market will probably already be open. But Fed Chair Powell is supposed to speak today. So pay attention to that. There's definitely going to be some market volatility. Of course, the market is expecting for the Fed to pivot. And if we take it back to Twitter, we had Elon Musk come out and say, the trend is concerning that the Fed needs to cut interest rates immediately. And that's what a lot of people are expecting. I'm not sure that it's going to help things. I think we're still going to see impacts of these interest rate hikes, these four basis, 75 basis points, 400 points total. I mean, it's just been, it's, it's been crazy. So do they move to the 0.5? I mean, the market's kind of already priced it in. That's why you've seen such a massive rebound in the market to where it's started to meet some resistance here lately. But let's switch back over to Valens because Valens shareholders will receive, and most of you already know this because this is old news, but 0.3334 common shares of s and And this is a great deal for them. Let's take a closer look at the company. Now, there were several things, reasons why they should support the arrangement. And let's understand just a little bit why 96% of the people out there supported this arrangement. And it's because of the continued growth. A lot of people believe in Sundial Incorporated and its potential in the Canadian market. And Zach George and the leadership team, they're doubling down on that market. And they are sitting back and waiting for legislative progress in either North America, where he's got his feelers. He's got, he's got, he's waiting. He's watching. I believe he's sitting back and allowing some of those investments to take shape, some defaults to take shape. And I think it's smart. You don't want to sit back too long because you're really going to miss out on some of the market growth if that happens in Germany. And Tilray just seems to be very well positioned, like I said in my last video. So if I took my bet, I would really be betting on Tilray and their position. But I really like s and Sundial Incorporated, and their combined revenue, market, and share, their cost synergies and savings that need to be 
realized, I meant they have to be realized, but it does look like 10 million, which doesn't sound like a big number because ever since Sundial incorporated Alcana, they've been generating some massive revenue numbers. Not big on the margin side, but I think they still have some room. And let's take a look at this portfolio uh, for, for SNDL to grow, especially on the cannabis side. This is what they have in the Valens brochure as of October 29th. You can see that up here. Cannabis, consumer products, everything from vapes to oil extracts. They've got beverages, which I'm not a huge fan on their marketing. I think the simplicity here really needs a touch up. They've got edibles, but what's really important about this and the wellness section is they are starting to diversify into personal consumption personal care products, and this isn't a plant that you could grow at your house yourself on the black market. They are starting to specialize, and this is going to be really important, them taking their cost basis and saying, hey, can we generate this at scale for profit, and do people want it? Because the cannabis industry is evolving, and major cannabinoids formulations are expected to disrupt the market, and whatever it is that they were working on in the past and that they continue to work on, to be competitive in this market, I believe this is a company, the Valance company that has been focused. They're passionate about what they do, but there are lots of trends. Just to mention one that could be related or unrelated, biofermentation is the next big thing for skincare. And you can see this was last year, but just keeping up with these trends, this is just an example of what could possibly take place next. You know, what are people going to be into and what's going to be the big trend? And these trends change very quickly and investing heavily into any one product SKU, which it sounds like they can develop these SKUs at cost, very, very low efficient cost, very quickly. And that's what we're seeing here in blending these two companies together. We've got a leading Canadian manufacturer and then we've got the Canada's largest regulated products platform. So we've got 185 locations. And mainstream, upstream, we've got low-cost capabilities in the industry and biomass procurement. Basically, how are we able to use the entirety of the plant to create new formulations and new SKUs? And they look to be bringing this innovation to market much faster than competition. They've been recognized. I mean, the Extraction Magazine, this was a couple of years ago, but they were recognized here as one of the top five or 10. So I would say definitely a value add to the company. And as you're looking to consolidate, the market's gonna consolidate. This is a good add to the company. And this is where I'm getting the 85 SKUs or stock keeping units. Now it's really important to sunset what's not selling and do a gross margin you know, analysis with having so many of these products, you just don't wanna have them collecting dust. So they really need to be data focused as they start to move and grow and get bigger. And I want to hear more of that in the next earnings call. Now, they were recently awarded wholesale license by Australia. And we keep hearing three areas internationally for Sundial Incorporated. We hear Malta, we hear Israel, and we hear Australia. Those are the three that I've been hearing. And I just wanted to say, okay, Australia might be one of the bigger markets out of those three, but they're all small. And we're seeing 2021, 51.8 million. This has a CAGR of 31.1% expected growth between 2022 and 2030. According to this publication, grandviewresearch.com. So is this good or is this very, very small? Now we're talking about 50 million, which is going to be fought over by a great group of companies, right? So I just want to say that, you know, I want to be very optimistic on what the revenue generation is going to be internationally, but also what is the revenue generation that is capable for Sundial Incorporated within Canada, solely just Canada? And then what can they get outside of Canada? That would be North America region, which would be a massive market and Germany if they go to legalization. And if you watch my Tilray video, Tilray is coming out with earnings expectations of 1 billion to 4 billion through 2024. So be sure to check that video out if you haven't already. But I do want to say 
that Sundial has to move in if we're going to see a massive price jump. We have to see cannabis reform in the U.S. and we have to see some reform in Germany. I think it's going to come just at what time frame and at when do you add to your position. I'll let you decide that, but I'm going to keep you updated. Now let's take a look at the income statement on a quarterly basis for Valance. For those of you that haven't looked at this, it's been lumpy. I mean, at times they're doing well, at times they're not. And I believe that there's a reason that they made very clear in their earnings as to why they had some lumpiness in the past. But you can see it hasn't been it hasn't been consistent. But do they realize these new cost synergies by being added to Sundial Incorporated's business? I don't think it happens overnight. It might take a quarter or two before it's realized, but before the end of next year, we might see a stronger business overall. I think they're already planning and thinking about it as soon as this proposal came out. That's all I got. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel, give the video a big thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in the next one.